is a very important and intriguing uh, discussion, discourse, if I may, if I could put it that way. India's growing appetite is reflected in its uh, fast-moving consumer goods and the entire market, which experienced a notable shift uh, in consumption patterns last year, 2023, uh, be it uh, startups, uh, be it uh, our change in consumption trends, uh, 2023 has been that pivotal year. It has been characterized by, of course, a swift recovery uh, amongst the higher income brackets contrasting this trend. Rural India, ladies and gentlemen, constituting nearly 40% of the FMCG market has witnessed a sharp decline. Uh, this drop in rural demand poses a significant challenge to the overall growth trajectory of the FMCG sector. And that's why, while premiumization is bound to accelerate uh, with all the applications uh, and, uh, you know, on your doorstep delivery uh, at the touch of a button, whilst all of that is going to accelerate, uh, we need to target strategies to revitalize consumption patterns in rural areas specifically. Before we introduce the man who's going to be talking about this and my colleague who's going to be the moderator, let's look at this short clip. Those are some of those products, ladies and gentlemen, that encompass what the fast-moving consumer goods sector today looks like. Rural areas, the rural sector, that's going to be our focus of discussion. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the ball rolling after our short, quick lunch break. Please welcome Tarun Arora, CEO and Whole Time Director, Zydus Wellness, to discuss the growth trajectory of, uh, for India's FMCG industry. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Tarun Arora, CEO and whole time director, Zydus Wellness. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to ask my colleague, TV9's uh, Shweta Kutari, to please conduct this session. Shweta, over to you. Good afternoon. Good to be back. I hope stomachs are full, hearts are happy. And as we kick off this session, I'll tell a story again because I'm known to do that and since I'm a teacher, I believe there's no other way I can keep an audience uh, up and running and kicking and listening to me without telling a story. So let me take you back to the World War II and we're talking about 1942. Men were going to war and they needed nutrition. Now how do you get nutrition or green food when you are in the middle of nowhere? Where do you grow that food? How do you ensure supply chains? What do you do? So it was a conundrum that Many countries were fighting at the moment. So what did they do? They came out with a complete food plan. I'll repeat, a complete food plan. This would be an alternative to wholesome nutrition and it would be available as a health supplement and in drinking format, so you could drink it. Now it became so popular in 1942 that within few years it was soon recommended as something that people who had food intake problems, they could use it, they could drink it, they did not have to consume it. Very fast it came to India and it became popular as a drink supplement for children in India. Can anyone take a guess on what I'm talking about? Calm plan, yes, and the man who is also heading that company, that brand, is with me here today, Tarun. Uh, let's give Thank him you. a very loud very round much. of applause. You know, Tarun, to a lot of Complan girls and Complan boys here, a question that comes to our mind is, we used to see Complan in lot many places prior to a couple of years ago. When are we going to see Complan hitting all shelves in all areas, perhaps all, you know, geographies in how many years' time from now? Uh, so, so uh, I think Complan is available pan India. It's not just available in India, but it's available internationally as well. And uh, it's more than available in more than half a million outlets in India. Of course, our endeavor is, since we acquired it uh, five years back, to take it to the next level. We want to reach to a million level, million number of outlets. 
what we've seen is actually a uh, number of consumers are going up. Actually, uh, there was a journey, and I don't want to talk about prior to our acquisition much, but uh, in last three to five years since we've acquired it, uh, the number of consumers has gone up. It's a little slow because nutrition today comes from various uh, things. Today, if, if you eat it's a uh, very roti, you're, you're thinking about how much fiber it has. You're having a chocolate spread, and you're saying, okay, I have some calcium. So the meaning of uh, nutrition has changed, but Complan is evolving itself. We're already having a separate product for toddlers. We are making it uh, more relevant for the future and not just living in the past, that it has a great legacy. And I think uh, we should be reaching to a million outlets in coming years and a much larger uh, presence. We've just share, launched a new share campaign. Some of the, I'm, a, I'm a business reporter. I have to take something away from this conversation. Share some of those plans with us. So sure. Uh, so to start with, uh, we've just rolled out a new campaign uh, this year, this calendar year, about a month back. Uh, with uh, Madhuri and Sneha as our brand ambassadors, where we talk about superior nutrition and the fact that uh, how it has helped them become not, I mean, helped them in their um, years when they were mothers and uh, uh, therefore how it plays a role of superior nutrition uh, with extra protein versus others. And I think this should help us, this will be followed up with a set of new uh, innovations that we have pipelined in this year, maybe two launches that we have planned in the next couple of quarters. So that's something you can take away from All the right, innovations. All right, Tarun. Perspective. And, and since it's a larger conversation on FMCG market, I think there is no person who does not consume one of your FM, FMCG product one way or the other. We're all consumers here. And I think an important sort of trajectory that we've seen emerging in the past couple of years where uh, supply chains seem to have become more efficient. Uh, the FMCG journey also in a way mirrors India's journey of consumption. You know, you look back at FMCG and you, you, you can actually predict on how people are going to consume, how much money they have, what's their discretionary spending like. Talk us through what are the key trends that you've seen since COVID. Are people consuming as much as they were consuming earlier? Has there been any sort of change there? Uh, so uh, I think there were a lot of changes in Nifi, and since you talked about it over the last two decades and in two years, things have dramatically uh, changed. People talk about the K-shaped curve. So first of all, I think a couple of decades back when e-commerce had started coming up, and I used to believe that, look, Who's going to buy online? You know, it is a complex supply chain. The whole value chain is very difficult, being available. The price points, the ticket size is very small. You can buy 200, 300. It is not going to be viable to be able to service large set of consumers nationally uh, through that. I think that has dramatically changed. It started changing about a decade back, I think three to four years back. The moment COVID hit and the supply chains were disrupted, Everyone went into a very different mode, and uh, the supply chain, uh, especially led by the online commerce, has completely disrupted and gone into a you know super uh, speed. Where I would say, just before COVID, for us, for my business, we would be about one percent of our business coming from online commerce. Today, eight eight percent, eight to nine percent of our business comes from uh, online commerce. So the consumers have completely changed the way they are buying, but our ability so, to reach uh, uh, consumers. Can we therefore say that people are not, not just buying uh, clothes, shoes, bags online, they're also buying essential items online? Absolutely. And most of our products are essential items. You need a prickly heat powder, Nysel. You want your regular supply of sugar-free. You want Complan for a monthly basket. They're all available. And we are selling pretty much uh, even a scrub for our every youth. Uh, there's a good demand for that. And are you talking about traditional e-commerce platforms or quick service delivery platforms? Both, both, both. And I think quick service uh, is moving much faster than the rest of the platforms. Of course, the economics will come with scale and there are other challenges also they have to overcome with the infrastructure. But it's scaling up pretty, uh, pretty fast, I would say. Uh, okay, I, I want to indulge the audience as well. How many of you actually order your daily essential items using Blinkit or Azepto or any other competitor? Like daily essential items from your biscuits to your groceries. I think that, that tells That's you large, almost no. everyone. I think 90% of the audience is actually going to one of these quick service delivery apps to you know, get orders of their essential items. Yes, you were saying. So, so actually the behaviors, the consumer be shopping behaviors are changing. Earlier there was very set patterns. You would buy your monthly grocery basket, there were a, there's going to be a top up and etc. etc. Now the behaviors are fairly different. There are weekly 
things and their month, uh, daily things. Uh, I think the enablement which these channels and uh, online has done, the shopping behavior has also changed. And therefore, you will find what this. What sort of change? And, and you're buying. So, so there's some of the things that you will prefer to buy online only. For example, if I need a 10 kg atta, earlier I would either call the nearby uh, grocery store, but you know, you got better deals in a modern trade store, but who's going to carry it? Today, online is making it easily available. So the whole way of where do I buy, where is the price discovery, I think there is a quite a mix and people are getting smarter and making choices as per their personal lifestyle changes. Absolutely. Uh, whatever suits us, perhaps. <laughs> I, yes. I think whatever suits the consumers, whichever platforms, whichever is quicker, faster, more convenient, everybody would like to go for that. I want to talk about the K-shaped economy because you referred to that. Now, would you believe that the K-shaped re recovery from COVID has had an impact on consumption patterns in FMCG as well? Are you looking at a class divide when it comes to rural versus urban? What sort of trends are you looking at when it comes to consumption? Because, you know, a, uh, there is a lot of conversation around how demand is picking up, but it's essentially picking up in urban pockets, not such so much in rural areas as much as we would like it to? So, uh, in my understanding, I think it's COVID, yes, but post-COVID, the inflation that happened, and I think that was the starting point was that there were uh, a lot of money which was put on the table uh, by a lot of governments worldwide, a uh, lot of direct transfers, etc., which created a huge pull, and uh, the whole global supply chains were disrupted, which led to a substantial uh, lack of balance globally and the whole supply chain was disrupted which led to substantial inflation spikes which affected everyone globally. Now the inflation hits the lower income much more than the people who have been better off. So what's happening is as the economy, Indian economy is going up, you clearly find that there is the rural uh, which is who have impacted by inflation are making choices of trading down, buying smaller packs. So while the penetration may be going up, the consumption levels are dropping, and which is impacting the rural economy. Uh, on the other side, amongst the urban places, you find there are discretionary uh, spends which are going up. You will find certain part of the economy, which is uh, consumer economy, discretionary, the hotels, the tourism, hospitality, that's going up. With an FMCG, you find a lot of people are able to move up. Uh, so if they were buying something, they are, because there is money, they already have uh, sufficient, uh, you know, covered up. They buy superior products. The excess is also helping. So there is a clearly a K-shaped situation uh, where the premium products are obviously growing faster, but rural economy is not dropping in penetration. Consumers are uh, consuming a lot of uh, internet, media, etc. They are driven by similar choices, but they are probably buying at a lower price points. Uh, which is impacting your consumption, which is impacting, uh, I think things will get better and okay. I'm quite hopeful. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying rich are getting richer, urban people are buying more premium products, but poor people are either, or you know, people living in rural areas, let me put it this way, I think it, it's better said and, and more acceptable, people living in rural areas are buying either at the same capacity as they were 10 years ago or perhaps lower, but definitely not going for premium products. No, I, I think they are also conscious about the premium products and therefore I, I'm, I would look at a little larger perspective. I think the way I would look at it is that uh, because their incomes are already limited, they may choose to buy smaller SKUs, the lower unit price products. So they are conscious about the price points, but their choices are not driven by uh, the fact that I need to buy cheaper, poorer products. They still want the uh, same product. They still want uh, their child to be educated and uh, do well in life. So uh, I think the drivers of choice for them uh, are very similar to urban uh, people. It's just that the inflation has hit them a bit harder because of the limited incomes. And therefore, you find some of their choices uh, bringing the consumption down. All right. But you can't deny that there has been a premiumization. Today, people want yeah. to buy more expensive. They want to show more expensive. They want to eat more expensive. But at the same time, there is a section of society that simply cannot afford to do so. So, so I think uh, the COVID has made a lot of people realize, and there's some more of a... Uh, I would say psychological impact of here and now and therefore the here and now economy is shut up where people are ready to you know buy a lot more now 
experience now, spend now, and you only not worry once. about the future. <laughs> okay. So, so the YOLO culture is, uh, I mean, right. it's only expanded, and that's why people are just going ahead and uh, spending a lot more today than they were probably 10 years back. Uh -huh. All right. So it, it, it's it's a function of uh, you know the the problems that we have seen in the past two years solely by the way of COVID perhaps not so much that suddenly people have become more richer. Accentuated by COVID, not only by COVID. Okay, accentuated by COVID. But I also want to talk about, uh, you know, coming to Zydus Wellness and uh, you have forayed into international markets, not just in South Asia, Southeast Asia, but also MENA region. Talk to us about your global forays. What markets are you targeting? How are you making in India and moving to other countries and supplying in those other countries? Uh, and perhaps also talk to us about how the FMCG trend line is looking like. Are we looking at more people making in India along with you, your competitors? Uh, and what sort of supply chains? How are we diversifying? Which are the regions we are talking about here? So that's a lot of questions, but I'll try and uh, give you a, a full answer on this. I think, uh, first of all, uh, I think if you want to play and you want to realize, and it's driven by the government, it's a call for the government where even uh, uh, the Prime Minister has talked about India could be the food basket for the world, uh, and more and more Indian brands are going outside. Uh, and exploring the world because we have a capability. I think we looked at why should we exist outside India, why sh what can we take? And when I look at uh, our portfolio, uh, when I just look at, say, uh, two, two of our brands, the Sugar Substitute, Sugar Free, where we are significant player, we're not just number one in India, we are the top five globally, just because India market is large and our presence. Similarly, our capability, both at the cost and our ability to manufacture at a global scale is pretty good. Similarly, Complan, it's relevant to a much larger audience. So we said we need to take these products outside India and also not just be an exporter of products, but play the international business where you focus on innovations and if required, make outside also. But primar primary responsibility is to make in India because government is also supporting us. We have our capabilities here. Uh -huh. So we are our approach is we are saying rather than going to the developed markets which are anyway more evolved, we are focusing in Southeast Asia, Middle East and Africa where I, we find a good relevance of our products, uh, good consumption and most of our consumer work also shows that our products uh, you know, resonate with these consumers. Absolutely. So we've also not, done innovation to right. make it more relevant to these. All consumers. right. So we're not just looking at global companies coming into India. We're looking at taking India to the world. So, and let me give you a prime example of that: is the digital public infrastructure. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav is here with us, and he has built an infrastructure which India is now transporting to the rest of the world. We'll hear more from him. But thank you very much, Tarun. Thank you very much for listening in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tarun Arora. Thank you so much, Shweta. Um, it 